Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you all for joining me. Please don't mind my voice. I have got a cold. Our weather has been up and down and up and down. And yeah, it's a good time for a cold. So today what we're going to do is we are going to do miniature canvases. Now I have the Beacon Hill dollhouse in progress. That's my kitty scratching on her scratching post, so please don't mind that. The kitties are awake and they are lively today. So I'm not sure that's good. <laughs> Hello Pepper. Pepper's just come to see me. Um, so anyway, let's get on with this. My people that are going to be inhabiting the Beacon Hill are in their mid 60s and they do like art and do collect a few pieces when they find something they like. And my problem was I wanted it to look like it was on canvas, but I was having a really hard time doing the canvas transfer and especially with very small pieces. I could get it, the layers peeled down, but I would always end up with a milky looking canvas and when I went to take that one down, because the prints are so small and everything, I just totally messed it up. Let's put it that way. So I came up with another idea, and I'm sure it's not my original idea for sure. Uh, but I'm, but uh, I just wanted to share it with you because I thought it turned out kind of cool. Now this is a little picture, and I have it framed. Don't judge me. My miters are way off. And so... I'm either going to have to figure out a way to fix my corners or just reframe my little canvas. I just got a new, I don't know what they're called, they're the powered miter saw, only it's a miniature. I'll be doing a thing on my tools in an upcoming video. And it's it's a lot of fun, but I'm not very good at getting it accurate yet. So that's, that's a work in progress for me personally. So don't touch, okay? Um, so this is how it is and I don't know if you can see with the lighting but it really you know you really do get the effect of the canvas coming through and I'm sorry about any glare the sun's actually out yay um, <laughs> uh, so yeah so you do get the effect of the canvas this way now what I've used is I've used and this is just a scrap I've used just plain white printer copier paper it's HP I got it at Walmart and that's what I used for my printouts. I am using an inkjet Canon printer and I find it works pretty well but a lot of times I find I have to lighten my prints because some of them as you will see in a little while are rather dark. I'm using a brush that is semi-stiff. I think I bought a pack of four of these for I think I got them at one of the dollar stores so they're cheap. The ends were very jagged, so I just cut them off flat. You're going to need scissors or a paper cutter, whatever you want to use to cut out your prints once you've got them on your paper. Uh, I am using, I bought these canvas panels and I think I got them at Dollar General like for four dollars. They're just the little flat panels, but they're too thick to use the way they are. So what I did was I peeled the canvas, I'm sorry about that, focus. I peeled the canvas off of the board it was mounted on and then I cut off the sides because by the time you peel them off they're all wrinkled up and not, no good to use anyway. So you can get quite a few miniature prints if you do it right out of one little canvas and when you're done inside is what looks to be some sort of pressed cardboard or wood fibers maybe I don't know sawdust whatever this is the back I haven't taken the paper off the back of this one yet and on the front you do get a bit of residue from the canvas and the glue but you can sand that off and then you have a nice about eighth inch piece of really sturdy material that you can also use for your miniatures so you're really getting two things out of two for one so it's a really good deal Next, I needed a print, and this is too big for my dollhouse, of course, but I'm going to use it because it is big, and you can see it really well, and it's just a printable uh, painting of a lady. So we're going to use her, and this 
is the canvas once it's detached from the back. And you will end up with some residue on the back of it. I don't know if you can see that, but you can just lightly sand that off and it'll be fine. It doesn't bother me that it's there, but if you don't like that, by all means, sand it off. The other thing I'm using is I am using acrylic matte gel medium. Now this is just, it's called simply acrylic and I got it at Tuesday morning a long time ago. I'm trying to get it used up before it goes bad. So that's another thing. And so let's just get to it. You don't, you could use Mod Podge also. I just want to say that um, you will though have the bubbles. I found this doesn't give me the bubbles. And I think this cost me like a dollar ninety something. So it, was, it didn't cost me a lot. So what I do is just put a little bit on my brush and then I start coating my canvas with it. You don't need a lot, just enough to secure your little painting. And I got a kitty fur in there. Since this is just for demo's sake, I guess we're okay with that. It's not going to show. And I just, I like to go both ways, just like if you were doing an image transfer and get that down into my canvas. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> Got away from me. Okay, kitty fur aside. I can't get it out. Except this is just for the purpose of the tutorial. And I'm doing this right now in a different spot, not in my craft room. So what I do is I just lay the canvas down and then I start, or the picture down and just start pressing it into the canvas with my finger. And I'm pressing pretty hard. I tried this with an old Starbucks card I had and what it does is it'll start leaving marks on your print and you don't want that. Unless you want your painting to look like a really old one that's been around way too long. Um, I just press it in with my finger and this just, once the paper's wet on the back, it helps to, uh, it helps not only to stick it down, but it also helps to bring out the print of the actual canvas itself. And I am pressing pretty hard and it's getting away from me, so try not to get glue on it or your gel medium, uh, but whatever you're using, but, uh, kind of hard. It really won't hurt anything unless you have big globs. All right, well, we're just going to let her dry. And as you can see, it becomes rather pliable. So we're just going to let her dry. And while we're doing that, we're going to look at some other ones I made. All right, we'll just set her up to the side. She won't take very long. I did not use a lot of the medium. Okay, so here are some of the other ones I've done. And the picture I showed you in the beginning, the art, um, there's even a little cat on there. I don't know if you can see him. I didn't see him for the longest time. I was like, hey, there's a cat there. <laughs> so on that one, it was a much bigger thing. And I have found that sometimes you can't get the prints. Like, I couldn't get that one sized down any further. So I wanted the archway part, and so I cut off the other part of the painting. And on the other side, there was just, you know, the trees and stuff. And then there were two men and two little dogs. So I thought, well, why not? Just, that's just my cat. Um, I thought, why not just take this little part with the little dogs on it and make a tiny canvas? And that worked out really well. Next, I did one that is Degas' Ballerinas, and I love his dancer paintings. I don't know what there is about them, but I just absolutely love them. So I did that one, and I'm going to turn it, hoping you can see that it did pick up the, the uh, sorry about the glare, did pick up, you know, the impressions of the canvas behind it. This one, this is what I mean about lightening them. Now this one's going to go in the man's study, uh, but it's, it's dark. It's a dark print, and I mean, it's kind of darkish. Even in person, when the light hits it, it's not so bad. But it's kind of dark, but again, I will be using that one. I did a Vermeer because I love Vermeer. And is Milkmaid, or I don't remember what she's called, but I love Vermeer, but I don't know what she's called, right? Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I did her. And then I did this one, it's a peacock, and I love this. And I mean, I know it looks big, but you gotta realize some of these, like especially the portraits of the royals and stuff, 
they were huge. Some of them were life size. So, you know, it's not like this is going to be an out of scale painting. But yeah, it's the peacock on there. And then I tried because I realized not everyone probably wants to go to all the pro the hassle and expense and everything of using their printer for little tiny things. I tried a magazine. Now this was a vintage magazine, I think late 60s, early, right around 1970. So the pages were very thin on this magazine. And I thought, well, that might transfer well. And it did. You can see the canvas in it, but I don't care for that. Because I put the mat on it and it's still kind of shiny. But if you wanted to do the modern canvases, like you can buy in the stores nowadays, this would be great. It would be absolutely fantastic. So yeah, it does work and you can, if your magazine page is thin enough, you can pick up, you know, the, the canvas background. But it's not really for me. Uh, so let's get back to our lady. And it's still wet. This, this is still very wet. It's still very pliable. Um, when they dry, they will become a little more firm and they're probably gonna roll up, but you can put them under something heavy They'll straighten out, and they'll straighten out all the way when you frame them. So this one was done last night in a video that didn't happen. Corky, leave. My other kitty is here now visiting. Corky. So, yeah, I'm going to say that, I mean, it's still damp. I can still feel the damp through the canvas. And I, honestly, if I were you, I would wait until the picture dries completely before you put another coat on. But I think for the sake of this, she is dry enough. And so let's go ahead and finish her up. Okay, so what I want to do is, and I don't want a lot, I do not want a lot of my medium, but I'm just going to put a little more on my brush. And then I'm just going to start going over the canvas. And you may have to add if you didn't get enough. It's going to start going in a straight line motion vertically. And I'm going to make sure I get all the canvas because it will show if you don't get the whole thing. And I don't have enough gel here. So make sure you get the whole thing coated. And then what I like to do personally, and you may not want to do it, is I like to go the other way. And then I don't know if I'm OCD or whatever, but I do like to kind of swipe back down one more time. Now there's not a lot of the matte gel medium on this little canvas, and it's gonna look really milky before it dries. So she will dry and she will look just like the other ones. And she shouldn't take too long. This is a really fun project, guys. It's kind of addicting. I didn't want to overdo the prints because I don't know where else I would use them. Uh, the specific ones are for my Beacon Hill. And if your print's too big, you know, cut it down. That's fine. You can do that. You can cut it down. But as she's drying, you can see down here in the corner, it's already starting to dry. And this won't take long because, like I said, I did not put a very heavy coat on her. I'm going to rinse, rinse my brush out. I'll be right back. Corky, stay out of that. The only hard part about this is waiting for it to dry and then when you see it after it's dried is like so cool. But see, she's, it's all starting to dry down here now in the corner. This is one I did a little while ago. It's about three quarters dry and it's still pliable, but it's, it's getting more firm as it dries. It's just a little bit sticky yet. It wasn't a very good picture, so I decided to do something else for the video. And then when they're dry, like I said, they're going to curl up a little bit. You can stick them under something heavy, weight them right down. That's all good. 
and as you can see she is drying so we're not going to wait till she dries all the way but since i have showed you you know the process and then when it's about halfway dry and then the dried ones that's it i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit like and subscribe and don't forget to click that bell for notifications when i post something else thank you all for joining me and i hope you have a wonderful day bye bye